So this week, I decided to make a set of stocks. Halloween's not too far away, and they might come in handy. Who knows? Oof. If you want to stick around and watch how I made them this week, stay tuned. Ah Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to the shed. Follow me down the drive. So to make these stocks, I'm not going to buy any wood. I'm just going to use all my stock to make the stocks. I think that's how it's said anyway. Let's get on with it. Time to cut. For this project I'm roughly following the build plans of a Steve Ramsey video I watched three years ago on woodworking for mere mortals. Basically all I'm taking from the plan is the cut list and I'm going to be um, adapting them as I see fit for what I wanted to use. The plan itself consists of using 3x2s, 4x1s and some 6x1 inch stock. I've plenty of pallet wood and some scaffolding boards lying around the workshop so I'm going to be using those where possible and trying to make the dimensions work. I'll ensure there's a link down below in the description to Steve's video. Okay, the first task after all the cutting is to assemble the two feet. These are basically two 32 inch pieces of 3x2 which are very messily sandwiched together with glue and a couple of screws and we repeat that for both the feet. It's so much easier having my clamps handily organised now in the shop. I'll stick a link down in the description to my previous project video where I made my clamp rack. Whilst the feet dry, I'll get on with cutting the mitres on the support struts which will connect the feet to the uprights of the stocks. Even with a mask on, that hurt. New mask needed, I think. This is the only footage I have from the clamp removal. I noticed after about five minutes of doing a load of work that the battery on my camera had died. Now to find the centre of the feet, this is to allow the uprights to be connected. The 
The uprights are pre-drilled and are connected to the feet with four screws at a 45 degree angle to initially hold them in place. The uprights are having two pieces of 4x1 connected on either side of them. This forms a channel either side of the upright. This allows the cross members to sit in it later on. I use a small spacer to ensure that the two outer pieces are evenly spaced either side of the center upright. the uprights to the feet. I'm going to use the mitre supports which we cut earlier. These are going to be pre-drilled and screwed into place making the uprights nice and secure. As well as the main cross member or stock, there's also a lower support beam which is around 20 inches from the floor. This sits inside the groove that was made on the three layers of the upright. So here I am making a small um, shoulder, cutting the shoulders out so this will just slide into the, the channel that's been made. As I said previously, when all else fails, get some scaffolding boards and these can be ru roughly ripped down to approximately 6 by 1. The stocks have three holes in them, obviously one for the head and two for the wrists. The head hole is between 7 to 8 inches in diameter and the wrists are roughly 3.5 inches in diameter. Using a 25mm forstner bit I drilled out a hole, um, instead of using any fancy dowel for this I had a spare broomstick that was lying around the workshop so I cut that down to 5 inch pieces and they formed with the 4 dowels which you see on the end of the video. The end of the top bar is rounded over to allow the top piece to pivot. 
you may notice that both pieces of the top bar are rounded over because initially I cut the wrong piece. The hole where the dowel pivots is also slightly enlarged so it doesn't grip to the dowel as much. I know it's meant to be a medieval uh, instrument of torture, but as it's for charity, I thought I'd make it a little bit more comfortable. Just round over the holes, which are going to be holding the arms and the head. I've already done the, this side of the arms. We're going to do the, um, the the head piece now, which is the round over bit on my little um, trim router. This looks vile. So the idea of this is to make it look as old and dirty as possible. I'm not sanding it down. Um, I wanted to have some little bits of chunk, chunks of wood, a bit loose. I want to sand this down just to protect the people that are inside it. But this should be nice and dark when it applies. It's meant to be dark oak. We shall see. From the scaffolding board is it's going to dry, suck all this up because it is so dry. It's unbelievable. That was it. Time to leave the workshop for the night and let the stain dry. It was getting a bit late. So that's how I made these. It was a four or five hour project, just using some bits of timber that were around in the in the workshop. I finished it off by adding a safety chain on so we can keep hold of the peg. Also it acts as a, a way of pulling the peg out. If you want to see any more videos I've got coming up, hit the subscribe button in the top corner. If you want to watch some of the other things I've been up to, place down the bottom left hand corner. Thanks for coming by. See you next time, you know, Sunday's 7.30 UK time, stay tuned. Oh. Bit wet. Man, watch today's episode. Oh.